Hello and welcome to another coaching video, and in this one we have a Silver Jarvan versus a Silver release in. Jarvan's been buffed. Jarvan will also be nerfed. However, he will still be strong, don't worry. If you are playing this champion after the buffs, thinking, finally Jarvan, then you can still play it. In this video, we are not going to look at Silver players and be like, hey, look at all of this stuff you do wrong, you are terrible. No, we don't want that. We never do that here anyway, it's always constructive. But I also wanted to show you what really can work well in terms of carrying games from a silver perspective. Now, not everything will be perfect. There will be errors, that's what we're here for, but it will showcase to you a nice little, small example of what can be good and what can be bad. So, we start red, we go Raptors, we're going up to the side. What do you think about this in the comments? Do you know, do you like this kind of action from him in this meta? We know it's a bot lane Genki meta. In the future, it may be a top lane Genki meta, and then we can respond to it. But look at this aggression by the red side bottom lane to get level two first. The Swain is being chunked out. The Swain is, <laughs> Flash, heal is burned while we're doing this. Why didn't we think about potentially doing red Krugs and then capitalizing on this gank? We know the enemy jungler is most likely going to be sequencing up because that's what they do. Those are the silver tendencies. And we're just doing the same damn thing. Yes, we're five camping most likely to his six camp, or, you know, we'll see what happens. But the problem is we're not thinking dynamically about what's the Leeson doing, what are my laners going to be doing, what's the meta, and how can I carry this game? So this is still a big mistake. And that is exactly what we will talk about in the Silver Jungling course. You can see the topics on your screen now. Fully licensed, fully created by myself, coming out tomorrow on Vukai.gg, February 17th. If you want gold and you want to climb faster than 70% of junglers, you want to showcase to your friends group that you are in fact not a low elo jungler, this course will do it for you. Everything you need is a Silver Jungler to succeed in League of Legends, regardless of the meta. Season 10, Season 12, Season 55. I've got you covered in this course, and I'll keep updating it as and when as necessary. Lifetime access guaranteed. Silver Jungling course, how to climb to gold for Kaido GG coming out February 17th and linked directly below for you. Now we're onto the blue buff here, and we of course have the Lee Sin doing his Raptors. So people have always asked, you know, what, what would happen if this was in real time? Well, I give you the information that you see. What do you know? Lee Sin starts bottom side and goes up. That's all we know. He hasn't shown bottom lane yet, which means he's probably still uh, he's probably still clearing. He hasn't shown mid lane yet. He's probably still clearing. That's all you know at this point. If he shows top lane with 20 CS, he did a 5 cam. The information that you get from this replay is the same information you get in game. What I'm doing is pointing it out to you and saying, did you notice this in game? And obviously that's the skill set, that's the training mechanism. We have the team are pushing into the Riven. The problem with this clear on the Jarvan is it wasn't particularly healthy. We're half HP walking into the river, and this happens way too much in silver games. People don't do the right clear, and then you just walk into rivers half HP, and now you get collapsed on and killed, and now we're waffling. Because we'll have HP, what we should be thinking about is, hey, can I gank this, but we'll have HP. Uh, where's the Lee Sin? He's getting away with a 5 camp also, <laughs> also just over half HP. We hit this, he's super late to it. If you anticipate this, right, this is what we're looking for. If you're a high yellow jungling, you see this. You see this shove, you're in a lease. It's a team it doesn't matter. We're, we're wanting to get a dive going here. We want to do something. It's a Riven, though, so at least would do a good job. Jarvan will just get stunned, but she has no sums. We can do something about it. Also, if you did a 5 camp up and not a full clear, and the Lee Sin hasn't shown, can I now position myself to get into his jungle? On the main channel, I just made a video about this. Belveth, Kindred, Jarvan, Graves, Nidalee, doesn't really matter. If you're an aggressive style jungler or an early game jungler, you look to use your positioning to get into his face. Where is he? What is he doing? And if your clear isn't good and you're 321 waffling in the river, you're compromising yourself entirely. So what's going to happen here is we obviously see the Lee Sin do this. Jarvan decides to wait for the Scuttle Crab, worst thing you can do. Riven burns her sums here. If we were just positioning for the counter gank, thinking, hey, Lee Sin started on the bottom side, most likely he's going top side. Why don't I just kind of get in his face here a little bit? You would have been there for the counter gank. You would have been there for the Jarvan, uh, for the Riven kill. But instead, we're waiting in the river, waffling, looking mid lane, waffling. He wards, we scan. No point scanning if, unless, if you're just going to go. It's a waste of time. It's better just to go, and we get Gravity Field, and we know that the Lee Sin was on the top side. The Sanguine Pool is activated. Lee Sin is going to try to go in here. Uh, he does go in here. We get the safeguard EQs out. Will he take the Q? <laughs> you have to hit the Q, buddy. Now he's going to move into this zone, and because we're so damn slow at what we're doing here, he might even get a Raptor Camp. I don't think he should. He should go straight for this, but he might even stick around and take this. What does he do? Yeah, he literally sticks around and waits for that, using that full minute... Uh, 17 to 4 minutes 20 timer of the second spawn of the Raptor game. So I really like this from the Lee Sin to kind of sneak it away a little bit and then move on down to the bottom side here. But did he actually get anything of value or did he just leave it? He didn't take it! He didn't take it! Oh, it was almost so good. And Java would have just gone over the wall, snacked it, and then been like, wait a second, I'm snacking nothing because it's gone. And then the Lee Sin's down here. And of course, they have Pryo, his mid laner's base. Tragedy. 
So this is a great example of good, simple five camp gank, gank a lane Lee Sin. Good, simple five camp, try and do something, Jarvan, but do nothing. So if you're the kind of guy who full clears, walks into the river and waits for a scuttle crab, please don't do that. Think, where am I ganking and why? Am I ganking and diving this? Am I ganking this or am I ganking this? Ideally, if you get leashed here, you could just Krugs and gank it. Wait for their level two push and then kill them because, right, we can do that. Or just level two cheese it. You can do that as well. There's a lot of cool options that we have from a Jarvan perspective. Now, Lee Sin goes ahead and doesn't take the Raptors, goes down to the bottom scuttle, moves back up there to take his Grump. We don't see this from a Jarvan perspective, but he actually did the Grump here and then reset. If you're going to do that, it's better to do Grump Wolves and then reset because now the quadrant is clear. So now let's say we're moving down to this. Sure, we get like an extra control ward and so on, but it's not always about that, is it? Interesting. Because now, does he go to the bottom lane? I would anticipate in Silver, the tendency is just to go to the bottom lane. Jarvan in the meantime goes to the top side. Here he's doing a second small wolf camp. The Vladimir and the Victor are trading. The Riven is now half HP. Like, it's six minutes. She's experienced compromised. She's going to be six very, very soon. We go straight for the wolves. Like, this is a nice gank when she's pushed up here. We could do something about this. And instead, we went farming. So always ask yourself in your game plans, what can I do before I do my farmings? Now, Lee Sin either does this and goes bottom lane, does this and goes dragon, or does this and comes top side and ganks this again. Let's find out. We don't know. Those are just the three possibilities that uh, he has at his fingertips. Jarvan, in the meantime, goes clearing wolves into the Gromp. Now we have, again, level six. Riven is reached. We have the Vlad going down to maybe check and think about this dragon. We have Morgana and, of course, the Ezreal beating our bottom lane. The Riven kills the Teemo, and our Jarvan is not being proactive enough. He's gone for the Serrated Dope, but he's not snowballing. Where is the Lee Sin at this particular point? Probably still clearing. So now we go into his jungle. We could have done that beforehand. Now we're going to take this, but Lee Sin's probably going to run into us here. Uh, will we beat him with Serrated Dope? We can do. She probably won't rotate if that's what happens. Victor's pushing this here. Kind of expect something to happen. I really don't want to look to see what the Leeson's doing because it's a little bit random and I'm, I'm kind of curious. Does he just get the cheese on the back? And RNG Scuttle topside. So this is nice. Here we go. Boom! We get the knockup. Max range, but we get the knockup. We get stunned with Ultimato. Can we dunk? We dunk Mega Damage. Conqueror stacked. Auto attack. Auto attack. Auto attack. And we don't even use our shield. Why not? Use your shield, sir. It protects you from death and also absorbs spells which means we can go and contest this and have a better time doing so mm-hmm all right where is it where is the least <laughs> i i really want to watch this i want to see what happens here like i want to, i want to see what happens <laughs> this is good so this mistake here is something i really tackle in the course because we take our Grump, go back to base, take the Wolves, take the Raptors, now what? Why are we doing, why are we here? Can we gank mid lane? It's crashing and he's going to be leaving. We have no vision control. We don't know where the Jarvan is, right? The Jarvan hasn't shown up here. Here he goes. Like, do they do not see each other? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. It cannot be this close. Look at this. <laughs> Brilliant. This happens quite a lot, actually. Um, why is he counter jungling this? You know, these are things we're not thinking about when we're tracking. He's just like coin flipping, invading to take camps. He's also doing it. That's what I thought Lee Sin should sequence up. He should show me what's he doing. And then he shows up here now, crosses mid lane, sequences all across to the blue. Jarvan gets the dunk here, gets orange. He's got, oh my goodness, you could make this up. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So this is the kind of randomness that I really wanted to tackle in the course as well, because I, how do you game plan around this kind of nonsense? Like you could never know. Now we're waiting for the, the, the victor here. We know that um, our blue is up, but we have a whole red side quadrant up. Lee Sin, at this point, you must just assume is probably on the downside because I don't know. Like, I would assume that's where the strong side is for his stuff because I took his Krugs. He didn't show up. His red isn't spawned. His blue has spawned. His bottom lane's winning. It makes logical sense, even though we haven't seen him. So we're kind of just like a bit of jungle intuition, right? Morgana's going to go ahead and avoid this and clear it out. Good, excellent vision control there from our uh, uh, Morgana bot lane. Level four, everyone else. So the Jarvan has been severely low impact. Now his KD is going to be good. As I said, we're going to look at some good things and some bad things. Swain gets the flash Palpatine spell, misses the hook of doom. So he is no longer Palpatine, unfortunate for him. This is warded. So what are we going to do? We're going to waffle some more. I have to say that the proactive nature of game planning in this current meta, that's an overstep by the Morgana. Black Shield is burned. 
We don't have anything. Can we get a smite for a slow? Auto attacks, auto attacks, wins Q up. Three, two, one. Oh, is he gonna get it? There we go, auto Q. Nicely done, nice little rotation there. Good, that's something, we'll take it. Can we now use this pressure to go take the dragon? Your Caitlyn's arriving, you don't need to tax the wave, you don't need to hit the cannon minion. I know you want to, but there's no reason to. Now we can go ahead and do this. In the meantime, Lee Sin is, <laughs> I couldn't tell you, but it's funny. So if, he, if I was a Lee Sin and the Jarvan in this particular case, right? and I'm coaching them, what's the what's the core point that you can bring forward for them to help them? What would you suggest to them? Let me know in the comments, what would you suggest to them for the first 10 minutes? For me, it would be, can you think a bit more proactively about the game? What are you physically doing to try to get yourself a lead and your laners a lead? And at this point, it's it's there's no scientific application. There's no clearing or there's observation. It's just move around looking randomly for things. And obviously the, the Lee Sin does take that Herald as we saw, because we saw the Jarvan bot lane, so that's at least something. Can we get this? We do get this. Now we auto attack the Lee Sin as our prior. You wouldn't have expected this shadow across, but of course it's over aggressive. That should be a kill, nicely done. Red is down, could we go and check this? We could, but again, this is a free gank that I see. So that's nice FK usage there from the Jarvan to have a look. Uh, the Riven should be able to Maybe? <laughs> Q? Auto Q? Can we? No. <laughs> River Mobility Classic. Yeah, it's a bit of an issue that. Um, I like that we saw it though. We try to punish her lazy base. That's fine. We can take that. We walked over Control Wood. We should have seen this. So there's no reason to waste our scanner. I'd rather use a scanner somewhere else. But yeah, this is very much... Um, you know, if, if you are Silver and you're 2-0-1 here with a Dragon, you've ganked bottom lane, missed the Q. That's fine, right? Like, that's all well and good, but there's just so much... Stagnation, can you see it? There's so much stagnation. We're just sitting and standing, and like the Lee Sin is just randomly going to places, but we have had decent sequencing. There he is, good. Good. We're just pushing this out, and he's just absorbing experience. He, re he really wants this, doesn't he? <laughs> Come on, blind, there we go, okay. Calculated. So if you're willing to do this, why aren't we willing to do more risky dives early? You know, it's, it's always possible. Herald used, plates gained. Wow. I expected, based upon the KDAs that I looked at, I expected significantly more action in the early game. And it just, it just doesn't exist, does it? Five camping upside, not thinking about bottom lane, not update to the meta, not reconciling the clears with the enemy jungle. All the silver tendencies that we think about are in this game, but... He does have 77 CS. Yes, he's taken some minions. Now we see the Lee Sin go down, so we say, hey, can we collapse on him and do something about it? I would just try and make sure that I'm snowballing some lane. Now, the Caitlyn's 2 on 1, but the Ezreal is 86 CS to 36. He's not even on the Raptors. So the Lee Sin's tendency here is not to counter jungle, from our perspective. We saw, the viewer, saw the Lee Sin run around here, but we haven't been counter jungled by him. That's twice now he could have had the opportunity to steal these Raptors, and he didn't. So it's not really in his game plan. Now we're going upside again. Hmm. Hmm. See, I would think more about, hey, let me gank bottom lane here, and I've got time for the next dragon, so I could go blue, grump, wolves, loot back for this one as it spawns, maybe cut into this and gank mid lane, then I can translate down into this river control, gank this, I have this to loot back into this. That's a possibility. Uh, if we really want to contest the lease in on this, we can go here, oh, they're up, let me take this and gank bottom lane again. I can do that. But at the same time now, there's a lot of dead time between being bot, dragon, and our top lane camps that are available. So probably think bottom to top is okay, but we're not really playing in accordance with what our next decision is going to be. So the Lee Sin chose bottom lane here, hits the Q onto the Vladimir. It chunked a little bit. Again, we did our Wolves and not our Gromp. We could have done the, the Gromp as well. We have the Victor shoving down this turret. Cannon wave is in position. Huge fight on the bottom wave. Bottom lane, rather. Vlad goes in and does Vlad Gaming, gets absolutely killed. Swain, that's why he's so good in this ELO. Electric cube proc and uh, kill for the Caitlyn. Leeson tries to save, but Leeson will not. Well then. In the meantime, what does the Jarvan do that's good? Gets an Orange's Cuddle, sees at least in bottom lane, and holds the mid lane as best he can. Unfortunately, it's a Victor, 102 CS, and strong champion in this particular situation, specifically for melees. We just get kind of chunked out a little bit. His flags are a little bit short in, in a lot of cases. So he's not really putting himself in a position to EQ. Now remember, you can flash EQ. There's interactions with the flash. Uh, different places you can flash to make sure you hit that knockup. So even if you miss the EQ combo, you can flash at the last second to get that knockup if they've moved just out of range. There's a lot of cool combos uh, you can do with that. Vlad dies though. In the end, 
we leave and go to our red buff. You know, not much else. Not not much else we can do really. Yeah. I mean, we could try and kill him. I mean, if you think you can kill him, you're welcome to try. I think the whole goal here would be if I can kill him, I will kill him. But I don't really want to be holding this lane this long. Like, it's really not enjoyable. But at the same time, see, I wouldn't base here because what if the Leeson just ran? It's warded here, obviously. But what if there was some randomness and they just. Someone was here, right? We have vision, so it's okay. But I always like to base in a bush or under the tower, just where I'm not going to get cheesed. Now, the dragon's going to be spawning. So I would hope we go to the bottom side here and try and make something happen. But because we based too late, this is a free dragon for them. We were holding this too long. And of course, our bottom lane has no prior. So we wanted to gank the bottom lane first before the dragon get the prior. Likewise, we wanted to gank the Riven first before she got six to guarantee it. Dunkings! To be at least one kill. Can we flash key this? Yes, we can. Good job, sir. We'll give her the dragon for that, but that's fine. 402, Eclipse built. Going into the Black Cleaver, I hope. If you're really smurfing it, go into the Axiom Arc. Could be something fun. You know, that's what we talked about in the uh, gameplay video. But ideally, you could just go something like Stopplate. You could go full damage. But I do believe in this ELO. It's better to have more team fighting mechanisms. We'll clear that off as well. RNG Scuttle is burning. Leeson's on his Grump after doing the Dragon. Can we kill him and beat him? I like this. Nice little power thing here. But obviously, their bottom lane's respawning will be coming down. <laughs> Six to seven. Oh, for the ease, man. We have Victor rotating, so be, ca be cautious about this. The Vlad's bottom lane, which means that Caitlyn should have got mid lane to hold that tower. We want to be careful here. The Vlad could come out of the fog of war and do some evil things to us. That's fine. So this is silly. They should have just got here and shoved this up, and now we could join them and shove this tier one down. So if you're a non-jungler, this would be a good play to make. These are all just minis that are dying. No one's getting this experience. No one's getting this at all. And um, yeah, so I like the farming tempo, 114 to 86. I like that we were thinking a bit deep, more deeply about that than the Lee Sin. I like that we shadowed and hung around in situations where we could get advantages. I like that we had some cleanup kills and rotations in the bottom lane. We dunked the Riven twice and we got a kill. We were able to get a dragon. Good things, right? Not, not something too terrible. When you look at this at 402117, you're like, I did a solid job. And he's two levels up in the Lee Sin. So I think that's the most important thing here. Are you doing enough to be two levels up on other silver junglers? If the answer to that is yes, then I would say, pat yourself on the back, do it consistently. We do have the dunk button, but of course the Graviton Field of Doom. Gravity well. Um, well, let's see what we can do here. Black Shield won't save you from the crater. No. One more Q. Oy, almost. E flag. Ezreal. Ezreal's here too. I'm watching the Ezreal on the map. <laughs> Always be aware of the ADC who doesn't rotate. I don't walk into the bush where you know... Okay, so that's a bit of a... That's a bit of a no-no. We don't want to be in that particular situation. Ezreal? Ezreal? Don't chase. Don't chase. He will poke you guys out. Just leave. Leave. Run away. Monty Python, run away. Oh, Morgana's here. Just disengage the situation. Someone's going to overcommit at some point. Someone's going to die for this. Ezreal, isn't it? Oof! Wave crashing, a little risky cut. Don't stand there, don't stand there, don't stand there. He is actually something. Yeah. Okay, noises, noises and confusion. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so this game was looking to be kind of juiced, and now it's a little bit, like, a bit everywhere. I think if you have 131 and your 94 CS is the least in, I think we were very clear about why. He just blindly cleared, ran around, didn't think about the Jarvan at all. The Jarvan did think a bit more about the least in, but just not at the level that we require had a little bit of waffling and indecision, but at least it was more specific. I'm going to do this camp, I'm going to do this dragon, I'm going to get the bottom lane, I'm going to react. Good, good. Now we get this objective outside in rule. Riven's going to shop here, make sure we secure it. If we're going to coin flip it, if we're going to die and get it, make sure we get it. Alternatively, just kill everybody because you have a huge... You can press the R, right? You play Jarvan and you, cr you press the R to cancel. Don't leave your team or yourself stuck inside. <laughs> Uh, Victor shows up here. We might have to give up that scuttle potentially. Le uh, Timo's going on the lease in here. Blinded! Poisoned! Doomed! And, uh... Laser face. Taser face! Goes ahead and kills a Timo. Alright. So this is about as silver as it gets in terms of what we're watching. But at the same time, are we doing enough to get the leads against silver junglers and carry games? Our team has been caught out. We are doing the blue and the grump because there's no point all of us doing monkey things and dying. Sometimes we need to do gorilla things and show them that we're not monkeys, we're actually an ape. A great ape. That's what you want to do. 
Become the monkey, become the leader of the monkeys by becoming the gorilla. Now we're losing this tier two. We got this tier one finally. This is down, this is down. Hmm, let's see. We're going into double pickaxe. Double pickaxe chain vest longsword. It's a unique build, a special build. Only for those, the most secret knowledges of Javan. Obviously a double click, but hey, it is, it is what it is. I would probably not go into Death's Dance in this particular game. At this moment, I would go Black Cleaver straight up because we have enough damage. We have Shredder, we have HP, we have H Haste. We can stick to Victor, we can stick to Ezreal, we can stick to everybody. They're quite a separate team. Uh, we have Conquer fully stacked here, though. You can see the damage. From the thank you from the victor is quite intense here, so the the, the death stats not going to really help us. Whereas HP will greatly help us, and I still think going into something like a stone plate with potentially like I don't know if I want to go armor pen. We have shredding on our Q. I mean, you probably just go more in death stance as well, right? Like you go black cleaver more death stance. Maybe I'm overthinking it. More black cleaver death stance. Don't play like would be core itemization. Now he's going to the bottom side as our team is fighting. So this is where your team pays off. The pressure you've had, the lead you've had, the denial on the Lee Sin has allowed your team to, to scale and flourish a little bit. Very good. He rotates in. Obviously, use your F keys. Look at it. All right. Go take this. Now go take the dragon. Cool. Now I can push this one. Cut in here. Push this one. Nice. Can I counter jungle and kill anymore? No. Rebase. Next thing is a Baron. So it's good that he actually cuts in to join his team and activates the Herald. However, I would have preferred to have done that maybe here. But it's fine. No, no. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Problem is, you know, Riven's up, Leeson's up, there's a dragon available. You want to make sure you're getting everything that you can. And the team is going to do that. So we get the tier 2 at the very least, it's something. We get the dunk. Nice EQ afterwards, again, ulting then the EQ. Use your shield here, huge damage, get Q off the wall, doesn't really matter. We have the clips, we have the W. We'll have E up now. We have Q up in one. Now it's available so we can get out. There we go. Well done. Hit the plant. So the vision. Team is pushing down here. Very good. Nice siege. Good. This is how you climb in silver with these kinds of situations. Even if your early game isn't the best, if you can get fed, you're up two levels, this is how we want to use our lead. Don't overcommit though, now everyone should leave. Everyone should not overstay. Spend your gold, you got a lot in pocket. Swain, Caitlyn, baby. Swain, Caitlyn. I mean, Victor. <laughs> now they're over pushing, so we can collapse on the other side. Morgana's just blindly chucking those things. We have the crater up in 37. We're getting altered now, we're just gonna re-escape. Re-escape. We're going to escape the tether. Uh-oh. Leeson will take it. He will... <laughs> and he gets blinded. And we get the EQ over the wall. That's super going to be forced to flash. No crater, though. We get stunned by the Morgana. The Q misses. The S was just... Bl I don't know. Coin flipping. So here it's great. Randomness of the mid and the late game. As long as you're strong... I think that's the most important thing. As long as you're strong and you're making these right plays where you're in the fight. High KP, in the fight, high damage. You get a thumbs up. It's not always going to be easy as long as you're using your lead properly. But I do think the Milk Treads are great, <laughs> obviously. The Death Giants is fine, but I would have preferred to see, considering we went Eclipse, into the Black Cleaver. Maybe into a Hex Drinker, honestly. I think that probably could have been super good. And then you could finish off with a DD and a Stone Plate, or a GA if you're feeling particularly spicy, or a Zonya's if you're feeling even more spicy. Don't do that. Someone's over committing on the bottom side. There is a Baron available. We force a Flash. We get stunned. We cancel. We'll have EQ in a second. Her Q should be up pretty quickly, though. I mean, I don't know if we can... There it is. We miss the EQ. Oh, she misses it. It's a battle of skill shots. Caitlyn's arriving. Uh, over chasing. Thoughts? Thoughts about over chasing here? No, just let her take it. Take it and shove. Shove, shove, shove. So here we could split push a little bit, but the problem is the Baron is up. So I don't really want to do that. I don't want to have multiple people down here. Fortunately, they're discombobulated, but I really want to be pathing into the mid lane here, shoving this so I can cut in, have an extended vision line so that we can maybe set some shroom traps. Flat top lane. <laughs> I do understand you guys, but the reason we never talk about our teammates really, we, we have a chuckle at them in these videos, but the reason we don't talk about them is because they're not the reason you're losing games, you see. The, the early game should be very obvious to you. But I like this, you see? We chase, we kill, we take, we take, we cut into the mid lane. Here we go, out of position, we miss the EQ, it doesn't matter. Do we have enough damage? We use a shield, but we're not really tanking any abilities with it. We need to trap them in our crater that we should have in 15 seconds to get the W going. We're using our W quite liberally, um, which is good, but at the same time, the initial time we used it there wasn't perfect. Like, if you're going to use it, absorb damage with it, right? The spell is not just to survive, it's also to thrive. And now we're just hitting EQ, 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 nice kill. Can we get another one? Crater is up. Crater is up and no flash. We, nah, this is a dunk, right? This is an EQ dunk, right? 
Boom, nice triple kill for the Yarvan 4. Well done. Again, well done. This is like, nice, nice. Damage blocked 2000 because you got this and we have our W shield, which is now at 192. So that's a lot of damage you can use, but please use it strategically, strategically. Eclipse, W plus a stone plate. You can now either back your shields or just use them when crucial spells are coming out. So say your Eclipse procs and absorbs a crucial spell, but you know there's another big one coming that hasn't been used yet that you can react to, save your W for that spell. And then of course, when there's a huge burst coming through, you can then use your stone plane. So structuring your, your shield stacking properly can really lead to a lot of survivability. Um, yeah, definitely something that's not being thought about. So we leave the base here, we're going inside out, right? Because maybe we want to do this. Ideally, we want the dragon, I think. We don't need to force a baron here. So we can go blue, grump, wolves, cut in, push this up again, all right? Make the pick if necessary as well, or keep going here and then cut in afterwards. Um, we're looking for the pick here. We hit the EQ knockup. We're going to auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. He's going to flash and then, uh, of course, arcane shift over the wall. Sassin no javren. Very nice. The leasons in the bottom side here with the traps laid by the Caitlyn. I like it though. This is good. Like we went inside out to rope around to push, but we could have done the same thing here. Okay. So it doesn't really matter in the end if that's our goal, but at the same time, it's just to put us in a position to shove this wave and make sure we can get the dragon. So very good mid game from this job in the early game, but coin flippy, but passive, but good farming, not thinking too much about his game plan, but the mid game has been very good, I think. A very good mid game from a silver perspective, and as long as you're getting leads early, do this kind of stuff and you should have a lot of success. I guarantee it. Now we go onto the Baron. Now, pausing. Up, up, everyone's up. Who's not up? Oh, our mid laner. Do they know we're on it? Yes. Is Leeson 13? Yes. Does Leeson have a very strong second Q smite combo? Yes. Is Victor fed and very dangerous? Yes. So essentially what we need to think about, I just sound like Matt Damon from Interstellar. Yes. Yes. So now they're doing this, and obviously we saw the Ezreal mid lane. He's going back to base, actually. So what we don't know from the blue team's perspective is Ezreal's going back to base. We don't know where the rest of the team are. Are they all flanking around the outside? Is Ezreal going down to the bottom side? Is Morgana here? We don't know. Now, as soon as we have numbers advantage, I'm going to talk a lot about this in my team fighting section, uh, again, in the course, where you have essentially one person. You just got to look for that trigger pull, right? You got to look for that trigger pull. If Leeson steals it, what happens for the game state? For a red team, is it good? Is it bad? If Leeson doesn't steal it and dies, they probably lose the game. Is the map in such a dis is the map in such a desperate state that we need to coin for the steal? No, but also at the same time, if we die going for the steal, do they get inhibs from it? Because I'm dead. Probably not either, because it's the 26 minutes. So Leeson can go for the steal, but blue team should not coin for it. We see two here. We know that Ezreal's disappeared somewhere off. I'd be worried about the Leeson flanking from the top side. The Riven's flanking from this side. We need to just turn and kill the Riven, I think, and not force this coin flip. Fortunately, Leeson goes and gets... He steals it! Hero! But of course, why is Riven here? So Riven should just go, let Leeson steal and die. If Leeson steals and dies, and Victor, Riven, Morgana, and Ezreal all have the Baron, then you can use that, right? You can use that. So the, the Leeson makes a hero play, but it's only good if he dies. He needs to martyr himself for them to win. But because Riven goes in and dies for no particular reason, obviously she actually did lead some distraction, but still, unnecessary. The Leeson could have gone in and stolen that equally the other direction. As long as you have three with it, push, push, push. You got so much decompression. But because the Leeson dies, because the Riven dies, now obviously it's not as impactful and he's now over splitting. So he's splitting beyond the vision line. Look at this. <laughs> Look at all the fog of war, my friend, that is going to collapse upon you. Oh no, this is surprising. Team, why aren't you helping me? Team. Unless he wins. I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. Vlad, you're Vladimir. Can we do something? <laughs> Did we know? Hey, Javan, where'd you come from? I don't know. I don't know. So here it's, um, burn the Baron 100%. I don't want to coin flip it. Turn and kill, turn and kill. Keep their distorted back timers. Burn it freely. Don't lose it, because then you can end the game from this. If Leeson steals it and dies, he stalls the game successfully, which of course he has done. Now, Victor's out of position, Morgana's out of position. We are, we have the Hex Drinker, which is great. I still think the Black Cleaver would have been a better bet, but nonetheless, we can just use that for free kills 
So a kill. I like this. This guy's mid and the late game rotations have been very, very good. I like the cut-ins. I like the collapses. I like the collapses into the cut-ins. I like the shoving. It's been very, very good. It's been a good silver mid game. The early game was definitely not that great, but this has been nice. As we go into the late game, obviously. Late game is also good. We have the lead. One level up, though. This is unfortunate. We should be higher. Without a doubt, we should be higher. Okay, as I was saying, this is not so good. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You have such you had such a good time going on. Why would we even commit to that? Like, no wave. Under, just push this. If there's three people here, just push this. Dude. <laughs> oh my goodness. Those things, you have to teach yourself restraint. I cannot help you with that. But again, our team's fighting. We don't base and say, guys, stop fighting. See, this... Where they're all dying here and there's nothing we can do, I'll do my camps and reset. Then I can hold, we'll play, we'll live to fight another day. In this situation, I'm pulling off, my whole team is being caught out. I'm here, we can actually win this fight because I know Ezra wasn't even in the picture. So this is a good example of a rotation. Okay, nice E from the Swain, nice Sidious Lightning from the Q, double kill for the team. See, that's a good back cancel and a good rotation to the fight because we have numbers advantage. If we don't have numbers advantage and everyone's chunked and I cannot clean that up solo, I'm not going to rotate. It's better for me to go back to base, at least control my jungle, push up another wave to force rotations. And now because we killed the two, we have a 4v2 here. We need to be the lead on the dive. We EQ nothing because they are nothing, so they don't deserve our EQ or to be touched by the flag of Demacia. And then we die because we say, screw it, I need to go back to base. A lot of the meantime is doing what I said, just push mid lane. Ezreal's also saying, I'm a rage split now. This is my teammate's fault. You oversplit beyond vision line and died. Everything you did is your own fault, Ezreal. Like here, overchasing and dying, overchasing and dying. Like it's only his own fault. He has no one else to blame, but Vlad's doing a good job using this distraction. <laughs> okay, upon the respawns and everyone coalescing, we have the soul point coming up. Not the best soul, but a soul nonetheless. Let's see if we can wrap this up here. Should be pretty straightforward now. Take the dragon, push into their jungle. See here is where I think we can use a little split push. No one's gonna go here, but it's a cannon. So let's go here, push this, push this, push this. Our team's here, we can see them. We can cut into any fights. We can also proactively cut them if someone rotates so that we can just keep the wave push up. Um, I don't like A-ramming necessarily in this particular situation. I would rather us kind of go ahead, push this up, and we can cut them because this inhib is down. This inhib is down, it's gonna push by itself. So pushing it for a little pressure release is great. So we can push this up here, push this up here. Our team can push and go top lane. We could leave them alone if we trust them, but ideally we cut in and follow, right? So we're still here presently. But this is good. They push in here instead, and they cut into caps on the top side to catch this wave. So this also works, right? This also works, and they're doing it as a team, so it's good. This is good macro from a silver perspective, just to keep that pressure going. I would prefer to see a little push here into this cut in, into the same thing. Um, I don't want to overchase the Ezreal. I think we should be with our team here. Just be with your team, win the fight. If his team wins, great. If his team loses, he loses, right? So how much do you trust your team? How much do you trust your duos? Um, you know, like we're chasing a, a 4 and 8 ADC. There we go. And our team are doing work, but I'd much rather guarantee the win by being with them here. And now we just stall out the game. Do we stall out the game a little bit or just Vlad do things? Is that okay? Okay. It seems like it might be fine. He actually goes back to base to job, and now he's got the Black Cleaver. So he does have the full build. I don't agree with the order necessarily, but that's fine. The itemization core is important. As long as you get the right items. And now, of course, because... See what I'm saying? We They pushed, we left, we based, they got chunked, and they died. Now we've got to wait another five minutes to close the game. It's better just to be with them, forces, and end the game. Just had a pick here. <laughs> it's fine. Mechanics aside, so I like this though. We're going into the jungle. We're keeping the wave pressure. Don't die though, obviously. Wait for your team now. Yeah, that's fine. We can cut in and take the blue side jungle. Is that a trap? Yeah, you go. Don't commit 1v3 unless you know you're going to win it. In it to win it. Wait for your team. This is good. Nice. Yeah, this has been really, really good. And now, of course, the Vlad is joining us. He has no TP, so we're going to flash EQ. Go for the dunk, maybe. No, we actually don't have the... Oh, we do have the dunk, but we can disengage. So we burn two ults from that. So that's okay. Next time, they have nothing to deal with it. The Vlad is... See, the Vlad is doing what we were doing earlier. We need to group here, guys. Let's go. Let's end. Or at least leverage a 1-3-1. One, one. Why is Swain top lane? I don't know why Swain is top lane. So this is the kind of randomness you're going to have, which is why you don't want to drag these games out. Because when you do have your team fully grouped up on the top lane, and you leave, you might not get them grouped in the top lane again. You know what I mean? See? And now we do, of course, win this. Vlad shows up, free kills. Okay, GG, finally. So a game, it takes 34 minutes, 35 minutes, and I don't think it should take that long. I think we can all agree that this should have ended 10 minutes ago. But I do like the way we played it in silver. Obviously, the early game was messy. You see the negatives, you see the positives. 
So of course, we'll give you all of the answers to all of the infinite outcomes. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, I will see you all in the next coaching.